Hey guys, welcome. Good morning to our weekly Facebook Live. Can right, you find us real fast. And today we are going to talk about. Well, we decided that our theme this month is going to be fundamentals. Some of those like quilty fundamentals. Last week we talked a little bit about box corners, corners, which is you need to know for quilty bags. But this week I want to talk about flip and stitch corners. Um, some people call it snowballing, easy corner, easy corner triangles. triangle. There are a few others. Um, I forgot to turn my do not disturb off. Hold on. And so we want to we're gonna talk, talk about, about how to do bit. that. And then we're gonna talk with this project in front of us that uses multiple flip and stitch corners, and then you end up matching the diagonals. And so that's really what we're gonna talk about is how to match up those diagonals right. when doing multiple flip and stitch corners. Yep. Right? You good? Okay. Um, it's not in there. Sorry. Uh, do not disturb. She found it. Sorry. Okay. So today's project is from Cozy Up by Corey Yoder. It's her line that's going to arrive in the shop any day now. Uh, we have all the pre-cuts and the boxed kits here. I love this line. It's fall, but it's, it's soft Corey fall. It, she, she knocked this one out of the park. We Seriously. were pretty excited this about it. This is like a, a dusty teal with little acorns in it. It's, right. Uh, they're, they're, they're soft Cory colors and folly with the teal, teals and the greens. It, it's gorgeous. Love we this love it. one. So, um, Tricks let's for jump into it. Flip so, and stitch corners. Flip and stitch corners. This is when you draw a diagonal line on the back of your fabric. So the line, trim, cut off the extra. You trim a quarter trim, of an inch away from the seam. Trim off the extra. And Press. we have our angles. Um, Liz brought Leafy today as a backdrop. If you've ever done an Elizabeth Hartman quilt, or you've ever wanted to do an Elizabeth Hartman quilt, this is flip and stitch. Pretty much everything Liz everything. Hartman does is flip and stitch corners. All the corners on all of these leaves are all just... That's how all corners her, cut the tips, flip it over. That's how all of her animals are made. This is a basic skill for quilting. It's one that I always cover in my Quilting 101 class. We call it snowballing a lot. It depends on what you're doing. <clears throat> snowballing refers to making the whole square roundish by Basically, flipping all the Basically, we turn a square into an octagon, but it looks round. But it's all the same process. Mm-hmm. But this is the Liz Hartman version of Lee's. This is, I made this a couple, a couple years, years ago. ago. But so, it's the same process. Corey went another direction with her leaf. What's this? What it's called, called leaves. leaves. It's called leaves. This is leafy. This is leaves. Right. Close, but not, not the, the same. same. Um, so it's a mixture of 64 different leaves. So my leaves are clearly going down. Hers go up. And my veins on, when I say mine, this is Elizabeth Hartman's design. I just put it together. Um, my veins go straight across and her veins go diagonal. Are coming up. And I love how they're close together. But the only way to do that is multiple flip and switch corners. We're going right. to show you how to do that and make them line up. Okay, so here's my breakout. You guys know we love design boards. This is why. These are all the pieces I have to make a leaf. I've already done the half square triangles and the flip and stitch corners in these sections. Cause okay, I want to show you guys this Otherwise really it would fast. take forever. So in an effort not to waste fabric, I love when pattern designers do this, we started, if you ignore this corner that's cut off right here, that's a half square triangle. So we started by making a half square triangle. Yes. And then we flip and stitched this corner to get that narrow vein. Yep. Okay, it's awesome. It's an efficient use of fabric. Right, it keeps us from wasting a ton, um, and I appreciate that because these are the two at a time half square triangles. So this is how I have it all laid out, so I know that this goes, these go here and here, and then I just put it all together, and these get attached. And this way, I have I haven't looked at the pattern in the last thirty leaves I've made, because I just lay it out, and I go from there. Um, I sent Liz a picture yesterday of me working on two different projects at once. Mm -hmm. And it's because they're both laid out on design boards. I don't have to think about it. I can just go. Because the layout's already being shown to you. And because I laid this on out, the design board. I know what I have planned for it. Um, and when you're making 64 leaves, after you've done a couple, it's pretty... You can get into that muscle memory thing where you're just repeating the same Right. Step. I think I've removed one seam. Or better yet, you can pile 10 on top of each other on a design board and stitch the same corner 
over and over and over again and then go back well to and it. that's why like these are all done right here because i did all those yeah she did already. all those as a big chain piecing all right but we're not going to sew the whole leaf because we don't want to make you listen to that i've already sewn this half together and we're going to go ahead and do this one so it should be pretty simple we're not giving you any measurements because this is corey's pattern if you want it you it's available better. for sale. It's called Leaves by Cori Yoder. Coriander Quilts. All right. She's awesome. We She's awesome. Okay, so we're going to start. We're going to start with this center piece. This center piece by center, I mean this interior rectangle right okay. here. Now, I've laid my rectangle on. The question is, where do I go from here? I need a line that goes from this diagonal to this diagonal. If you haven't done this before, or if you want it to turn out just right, we draw a line corner to corner. Um, I'm making 64 of these leaves, and it's a lot of this, and so we don't draw lines. I don't draw lines. I just drew a line for you, but we don't draw lines. Um, this is the best product on the... What on it? I can speak. Yeah, this is called diagonal uh, seam tape. It was designed by they Allison. Come out like, they cut out like half the... Well, I had to do that because the staple was up there. Oh, okay. And it was that or take off the staple. Fair enough. Okay. Anyway, this is diagonal seam tape from Allison Harris of Cluck Cluck Sew. This stuff is the greatest invention in sewing since, I, I don't know, Probably rotary cutter. rotary cutters. Um, um, we, <laughs> we love this. It's a 10-yard roll of washi tape. It's going to last you forever. I own two, though. One for my travel bag one for at home yeah and at home it stays on until it gets really worn out and then i put a new piece on but it's washi tape washi tape is like a light masking tape so it doesn't leave a big residue kind of like painter's tape but if you leave it on your table for 10 years it will leave a residue which is okay because then i just put a new piece on over the residue right to be honest because it just lives there um but it's great for travel because then i can put it in the, when i put my extension table on my featherweight I can put a new piece all the way out to the edge of my extension table, right. and that's great. The washi tape has three lines on it, you guys. It's diagonal seam tape. The red line lines up with your needle, right? because that's where the seam's going to happen. And the two black lines are quarter inches. It's awesome because instead of instead of like, drawing a line like this, what I would do is, is make sure you point to the, the point other red line. aligned to the red line on the bottom and just feed it straight through. Allison has a great video. It's awesome. Showing how it's used. Um, almost every major quilter I know out there has adapted to using this stuff because it's because fantastic. It's if you've ever watched other YouTube videos and seen this random tape on somebody's machine, it's probably this. It's good stuff. Right. Um, for the purpose of this video, though, we'll draw lines. We're going to draw lines, but Jen and I, as part of our speed method, because, you know, clearly we produce a lot of quilts, we don't draw lines at home. It's time consuming. It takes forever. And um, I'm lazy. So, hold on. I don't draw lines. That tension. I thought she fixed it. Anyway, um, because it really does. It takes time to draw all those lines. And then if you've made the mistake I did in my early days, I used an air erasable pen. Oh, I used so to I drew do that too. All of these lines and then all of my lines disappeared. Right. And that was so yeah. irritating. Had to sew it twice, but that's okay. Okay. So it's, we cut off the extra for a flip so and stitch. So a quarter of an inch from the seam. Ish. Guys, you don't need to pull out the acrylic oh ruler gosh. and And for the little ones, cutter. I don't use a rotary cutter. It's faster with my scissors. Oh, they've got to be big for me to grab a rotary cutter. I know. I, I use scissors because it's actually faster. Right. For me. Um, I am because these are little. So, I turn that down. We are going to be pressing them open. Um, oh, it's not plugged in. Oh, so much for turning it down. Um, yeah, this is tiny piecing. So if you've ever seen us do Lord Holt work or any other form of tiny piecing. Elizabeth Hartman. Liz Hartman. We press open. This entire quilt is pressed open. Especially these veins. Guys, this is a finished vein at a quarter of an inch. It's got to be pressed okay. open. Okay, if I had seams pressed <clears throat> into there from both sides, that would be I want to show so you guys bulky. the back of this, though. It's a mixture. Yes, and we're going to Some's show open, line. some's to the side. It depends. I mean, what's our rule for pressing? You what? press whichever way it wants to go to be flat. So, I'm going to, here, I'm going to give this back to you in a sec. But the reason, and Jen and I can go through this and give you, like, the logic base of why each one is pressed each way. As we're piecing the individual squares, the, the units that come together, we're pressing our seams open. But then when we get to closing into that vein right there, 
there's going to be only one layer of fabric coming into that center vein if we press open and tons of layers coming out. So right. it's the fabric wants to go in. Everything wants to go it, into the vein. It's going to be flatter if it goes and in. And so we press whatever way it gets it the flattest and the way the fabric wants to go. So we press into the vein. Kind of similar to these outer sides and to the top up here. And then these bottoms, I'm going to show you guys. These are the final flip and stitch corners on this block. These yep. are the and last we'll two. One of them. These are the last two seams you make. And um, oh, sorry, I'm touching the microphone. Um, same thing. So you've got a seam here, and that kind of bulk. And so when you go into this very last flip and stitch corner, it is not going to want to open up really pretty and flat. And so it really just wants to go flat by going pressing out. Pressing out. So. For all of our tiny piecing, as we get all of our little flippy stitchy corners, we press them open. And then as we assemble the block, your seam got caught there. Um, I know. We, that's okay. It happens to all of us. I had to bring one that wasn't perfect. Sorry, guys. Then we start pressing the direction the fabric wants to go. But we start by pressing it open. Yep. And that's just for this project, you know. I, I say all the time, I press whichever way it wants to go. Mm -hmm. And that can vary from quilt to quilt and block to block. Oh, completely. I'm but a, within a block. Okay, sorry. That's the smoke here is awful, guys. Tomorrow it'll rain, and then we can breathe again, and my eyes won't hurt. I hope so. Um, okay, we did these flip and stitch. You might notice it's not perfect. There's stuff hanging off it's the side. It's not totally the perfect now, rectangle. Listen, my half square triangles—they're pretty perfect because I squared them up. I can take the time here to square it up. To trim that edge and make to it trim that edge and make it look nice because I know what size it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be not going to tell you. Oh yeah, I almost said it and then I didn't. So you can trim these up. You can square it up, but I want to show you about how to line these up because, like Liz and I always say, we match what matters, and and we let the rest of it go. And the thing that's going to matter is that right where this seam hits this seam and where this seam. It's this one. And okay. when we lay them on top of each other like this, they don't match up. And that's they're right. Half they're inch. not supposed to match up. The way they need to match up is a quarter of an inch in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down right here. And then I'll flip this one on top. And I'm not worrying about the edges. I'm not going to focus on this side or this side. I'm going to be looking at the middle here. And what I want is a quarter of an inch down from the top where my seam is going to be. I want to be matched up with the fabric on the back. I want it to make a nice X. little X, but it needs to be making that X a quarter of an inch down, which is another reason your seam needs to be as accurate as possible. As accurate as possible. I am going to make the two sides work. Mm -hmm. Because we match what matters and we let the rest of it work itself The sides out. can work themselves out as we end up putting these two long rectangular pieces on. Right. But that center is not as fudge worthy once we get further into it. That being said, I mean, I'm, I'm a professional, but I also believe in getting things done. Right. Don't and we do this 12 times? Right. It's fine. So if it's, if it's off a schmidge, life goes on. Um, though that one matched really nicely. And we'll show you this. I'm but, gonna show you the front, and I'm going to show you the back, so you can see what it. Was but doing. it's important to remember. I mean, sometimes we, people don't like to say this. Um, quilting is a lot of math. <laughs> it's math all the time in action, which okay. is actually physics. Quilting is a lot of physics. So our seams lining up nice here, so it looks like we have a straight line, right? And now in the back, our straight line is going the other direction. So if you actually look through. There's kind of an X running through the um, the fabric. So that's where we want to be. If you can't visualize this, it's fine. Take a ruler to it. Yeah. You know, a quarter of an inch. It wouldn't hurt. I'm, I'll do this for laying the next piece on here. It wouldn't hurt to be looking at the back here and say, you know what? I'm getting, going to take a ruler and put a dot at a quarter of an inch. Because maybe you're not at a place where you can easily visualize that. So we make sure that is lining up with the white and the orange. Yep. On the other side. And beautiful thing about white and orange is if I look oh, we through can the light. Through it, right? Hold it up to the light. You can see right through it. You can see exactly where that is. Um, 
So there are a lot of things you can do to help you learn to visualize this. Once you've made a few hundred quilts like Liz and I do a year. <laughs> I do a few hundred a year. Not that many. It feels like it. Some days. Um, you, you might get to the point where visualizing a quarter of an inch accurately is something that's in your skill set. And that's awesome. Um, I will admit it takes a while. Would you stop shorting out the room? Woo! You should unplug that. You think? Because you just shorted out the whole I just shorted out the room. Okay, guys. Sorry about so that. That's fun. Good thing so our cameras and stuff aren't connected. We're pressing this out. because. Well, actually, we can because that iron's still hot. I know, but I uh, don't think you can do your last scene. No. Sorry. No. I'm sure. I've shorted out my house before, too. Wow, that was that was pretty cool. That's what happened at my house that day that I told you guys about. Nice. Anyway, we have a nice diagonal line right here. Lay it back on the design board, and we know where we're going from here. So our next step is to attach this to it, and then flip our last corner. Put this on, flip that out, attach it to the center, attach it to the top, and we have a leaf. And now I just have like a couple dozen more to make. I would show you guys the scene, but apparently I, I killed the power. We gotta go flip the breaker <laughs> and fix an iron. Luckily, the iron's yeah. probably fine. We just need to flip the breaker. Uh, no, the iron's not fine. So the old irons, um, Dad will fix it. He right. fixed mine. Dad fixes everything. I know. He just resaw. I don't know what he did. He fixed it. We just Sorry, asked Dad. Down. I apologize. We're Dad. still we're still young enough that we're like Dad can fix Dad, it. Can you fix it for me? And he does because he puts up with us. He does. He's okay. a good sport. Anyway, Sorry. all right. That was fun. <laughs> That's a tangent. Anyway, this is a this is flip and stitch corners. You're gonna do this over and over and over in quilting. This so, is it taken up a notch slightly. Right. I love them because it's something that can be a very simple thing, but it can also, I mean, you get these big, fabulous designs that are nothing but yes. flip and stitch corners. Flip and stitch corners. Je I mean, I love it because you can design anything. Anything. Like, literally anything. If you've ever followed um, Gracie Larson of Burlap and Blossoms yeah. or Ellison Higgs, yeah. Like, they have huge also selections great. of crazy blocks that they make that are awesome. And, guys, it's all basic piecing. It's tiny flip and stitch corners, little pieces here and there. I know. People and think it's going to be super challenging, but it's not. And so, you guys can do this. Anyway, um, Cozy Up Yardage should be here. Like, yeah. In the meantime, pre cuts and everything. Pre cuts and kids are here. You're going to love it. I'm ready for fall. You're ready for fall. I totally am because it's hot. And smoky. Hot and smoky. Okay. All right. Have See a great later. day. Bye. Bye.